Dark Knight is an embodiment of principle, courage, and power. You take on the mantle of a warrior who walks the abyss, embraces the edge, and unleashes their power by mastering the darkness within. Now that's a bit over the top, but if I could describe Dark Knight in one phrase, the big sword edgelord stands by right. Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to give you 6 reasons to play Dark Knight in FF14. Starting with reason number 1. It's awesome lore and job quests. Now the premise of Dark Knight is rooted in the holiness of Ishgard and how it contrasts with the weakness of man. How even the holiest of men can lose to temptation. And if they can be held accountable because of their position of power, who then defends the feeble from the transgression of these people meant to guide and protect them? The Dark Knights. Now, the story in FF14 for Dark Knights is really good and contrasting with our own adventures as the Warrior of Light and gives it all a lot more depth. People who appreciate a good story should definitely be playing this job, but I really can't say much without spoiling it, so that'll be it. Reason number two, unlock requirements. Aside from the first two tank jobs, you can access Dark Knight as soon as you get to Ishgard in the award-winning expansion Heavensward, that's right. You have to just complete A Realm Reborn and the level 50 MSQ, and the job itself starts at level 30, which means that you can bypass some of the mundane ARR dungeons that other jobs will have to grind through. It may not seem like much, but having a low unlock requirement is pretty good, especially for new players, because it allows you to level up another job using your MSQ experience. You will, however, have to get Dark Knight to level 50 before you can do that and continue Heavensward MSQ. Dark Knight mainly uses MP to function. You use it not only to deal damage, but at later levels, you also mitigate incoming damage. You have skills like Edge of Darkness and Flood of Darkness which utilize MP and are later upgraded to their stronger versions. The Blackest Knight is another MP based skill that nullifies damage based on a percentage of the target's max HP. Your second resource is Black Blood which unlocks at level 62 and allows you to use hard hitting attacks like Blood Spiller and Quietus. Now all of this brings us to the third reason and one of the really important ones. Leveling and Endgame Experience Dark Knight's leveling experience in the earlier levels back in the day was a major snooze fest. You only had one AoE action which put you to sleep in dungeons while not having any self-sustaining options. In contrast, Warrior has Thrill of Battle which unlocks at level 30. This is due to the skill being a premium tied to its base class Marauder, but it is what it is. Edge and Flood of Darkness skills were added to Dark Knight and Shadowbringers, and as of past 6.1, you also have Stalwart Soul at level 40. This change has single-handedly made the job a lot more engaging in lower levels because you no longer have to spam Unleash only. But there's more to it, and I'll get to it later. And that is pretty much it for the leveling experience until we get to level 70, where Dark Knight gets its missing link that really brings the job together, the Blackest Knight. As a job that harnesses the power of darkness and turns pain into strength, the Blackest Knight completes the job. Every time you use this action, not only are you mitigating damage, you also get a free use of edge and flood skills if the barrier pops. Not only that, but TBN, like I said, is really good at mitigating hard-hitting moves. Of course, it has its disadvantages, but it does its job well enough although that doesn't justify its lackluster nature in Endwalker. At level 90, Dark Knight is pretty much a beast in damage and job engagement. You have a lot of keys to press and two resources to manage, namely MP and Black Blood. Your opener consists of 11 unique keybinds, some of which are pressed several times, racking up the key count. Overall, the job is really cohesive and doesn't feel clunky as a result of putting tank responsibility and we have to deal damage because that's how we play Final Fantasy XIV together. But the rest, you have to experience it for yourself. Now, I'm sure you're wondering if the gameplay is rewarding and satisfactory, but even if you're not, this is subjective territory and what I can tell you is that it's not as brain dead as Summoner and Endwalker, for example. If you've played Summoner before and after the rework, you know what I mean. Dark Knight as a job is really busy and to me it feels really good when I pull off blood spillers and not overcap on my NP and blood gauge. Everything you know is perfect and it feels really good when that happens. 
I recommend trying the job out and forming your own opinion based on that because that would be the best case scenario. Reason number four, you get cool mounts, titles, and job specific armor sets. Tanks in FF14 get special mounts after you complete a specific number of dungeons and trials, etc. Dark Knight gets two panthers, one is armored, one isn't. As you can see on screen, both of these kind of look cool, and in terms of lore, it is said that the moves of Dark Knights were based off of panthers in hunts. So that's pretty badass. Some of the titles you can get as Dark Knight include Dark Driver, Of the Stalwart Sword, Of Unyielding Principle, and Of Unbreakable Principle. I'm really close to getting the last one. You can unlock these four by doing a specific amount of duties for each title. And if you go to Achievements in the game and select the Battle subsection, you can scroll down and you will see these thank you achievements that the titles are from. Job quests, on the other hand, also give you titles like Black Blood, Of the Swirling Abyss, and Boundless Dark. Pretty edgy and cool, and I know there are a lot of people out there who like this stuff, so it's pretty good. A lot of these armor sets are really cool too, like if you look at the level 60, 70, 80, and 90 artifact gear for Dark Knight, you can tell that it looked really good. The dark stuff from Wolf's Den and the Garo collab is also pretty interesting to look at, and you get a pretty badass tank helmet from Eureka Pyros and you can augment it in Hydados to get a glowy effect and you know, it's really aesthetic. Now of course, aesthetic is subjective, but I'm sure this kind of style appeals to a good number of people out there and after all, glamour is the true endgame in FF14. Now this brings us to reason number 5, no longer in the grave, that's right. After years of begging and crying and dying to pointless stuff, a living dead was finally reworked and made into an actual involved skill. Who would have guessed? I used to dream about the day I would no longer be in the grave because I used living dead and a white mage couldn't heal me in time or too easy, too easy. Bless Yoshi P and team. It only took seven years or five years because I started in Spawn, but Dark Knight used to be the only tank without an actual inbound skill, but no more. Living Dead has been reworked. And now the final reason, reason number six. It's not a difficult job. Most of Dark Knight's difficulty is tied to his resource management, which is fairly easy to get a hang of once you get started. You use three edge skills, which basically takes 9000 MP and you gain some of it through Blood Weapon and your GCD combo, and then you balance it with Edge and TBN for Tank Busters and whatnot. You use Blood Spiller every time you have 50 Blood Gauge, and you prioritize your Living Shadow skill whenever it's off cooldown, because that is also used via Blood Gauge. It's nothing like Paladin or Monk, and it's really easy to get the hang of once you get started, but after that, it's on you to learn how the game works and what you can do to optimize your performance in each encounter to be at your best. And lastly, I'm going to go over some pros and cons of this job to top it all off. Major downside of Dark Knight is not having a proper self-sustained mechanism like Warrior or Gunbreaker or even Paladin. Back in Stormlift, we used to have Soul Survivor and a better version of Abyssal Drain. It was great in mob pulls, but crap against single targets. Now, we don't have Soul Survivor, and Abyssal Drain is worse in both mob pulls and single targets, obviously. Another problem with the job is Dark Knight. Now, if you're in any content that does not deal magic damage, Dark Knight is a wasted action. You're not gonna use it. It serves zero purpose. So hopefully they revert it to where it's more of a general damage mitigation like HOC or blood betting. And then we have the lackluster nature of TBN. It was great in Stormblood and Shadowbringers, but now it's just stale. Heavy mitigation? All tanks can do that and they do it better. People argue this by saying don't get hit to a point where you need to heal. And that is just BS for a multitude of reasons. I've actually heard this argument before and it's just not very plausible. TBN needs to be on the same playing field as the bridge mitigations that other tanks have and hopefully it'll be worked out, right? Now we do have a fair bit of good points as well. Living Dead is a big thing, no longer in the grave and self-healing from the Walking Dead debuff is really good. Plus if you heal yourself too early, you can no longer dive because the timer from Walking Dead carries over into this new buff, Undead Rebirth, 
which is basically Home Gang 2.0. Of course, it has a long CD, but you can't really expect it to be low since it is a tank in mold. Blood Weapon is also on a charge system now, so you no longer have to battle against ping and metal skill speed to get in your 5 GCDs. This happened to Delirium in Endwalker. You know, it took a while for them to fix Blood Weapon instead. And the job is not clunky, even though it's really busy and you have to manage two resources. It's easy to get into, it's accessible, and it has a decent skill curve and ceiling for players who are into that kind of stuff. But that's pretty much it. I hope this gave you an idea about what the job is like and why you should consider playing it. If you're not sure how to play it, subscribe to the channel and look out for my job guide on Dark Knight, which will be coming out real soon. If you're dealing with anxiety, not sure how I can overcome it, be sure to check out this video right here in which I talk about anxiety, where it stems from and how I can deal with it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.